right, so today we're doing a little bit of cleaning, going through the radiator. I gotta seal up another wheel. Uh, just getting things cleaned up. We should have the car back. Well, not back, but we'll be done at the frame shop Wednesday. And then Wednesday, that same day, we'll drop it off a powder coat. And maybe in another week, we'll have the car back. We'll be ready to put it all back together. But I'm basically just trying to get everything ready so that when I do get it back, I can slap it together in about a day. So I got my radiator out and I've basically been cleaning it up and going through it, checking the cap on it, uh, all my fittings. <coughs> I did have one issued prior races ago, which I did address. I did a temporary fix, but now I have it out of the car. I'm going to fix it now. So the plug here, there's a plug here with an O-ring on it. Well, the O-ring is not split, but it's basically crushed. So it had a small seepage point. It never leaked, like dripped, but it seeped down. I could see of the water like a hot spot so I run a uh, a cool dry not a cool dry what do you call it like a uh, a wet water wetter basically and it's got dye in it so I seen like red and then purple was dried up here so I knew that that one was leaking at one point so I'm gonna pull that plug out and put a new o-ring on it I have o-rings I always carry o-rings with me when I go to the track uh, Viton o-rings just because between fuel injectors for motors and other stuff like that, you never want to have a blowout and not have the parts. So I carry O-rings, so I'll grab those out of the trailer and we'll seal that back up. As far as the other things, I've got the wheel. So this wheel, I basically went through all my tires and stuff and marked what's wrong with them and what has to be fixed and changed and all that and all that jazz. So each of them have a little blue tape on them if they have issues. So like this one was from the wreck, so the wheels that were from the wreck, when I put them on the axle, I'm going to check them for straightness. So I'll just mark, you know, check straightness of rim before I put it back on and run it, get out there and the whole thing's all bent up and stuff like that. Because chances are it probably won't be the hub, it'll probably be the rim that's bent. And I do have one, and I believe it's this one. See, it's got a little dent in it, but that one's always had that. I got slammed in the left rear a couple races ago, but it never bent the rim to where it wobbled. It just kind of uh, just pulled the rim in a little bit, but it never had any kind of performance issue. But anyway, this is the last of my wheels, my front wheels that have the actual rubber gasket. So there's two methods to running these half wheels. You can run a rubber gasket or you can run a, a silicone. So all my wheels are silicone except for this one. And this one's been leaking a lot. So I'll show that process is basically just pulling the wheel apart and putting silicone between the two halves, clean the two halves, put silicone, bolt it back together, let it dry, and then that's sealed up and you shouldn't have a problem. Because I know the other wheel down there, that one's silicone, they're all silicone. So, and the front wheels compared to the rear wheels, so the front wheels, there is no wheel center that's bolted to this full time, so, because it goes on the front, it mounts up to the front spindle compared to the rear wheels, where the rear, rear wheels, it has an actual hub that stays bolted to the actual rim the whole time. So like when you do these, you silicone it, you put the two halves together and then you put the hub through it and then you tighten it down and then it centers up and it'll seal up that way. So this is gonna be a little challenging but I left my tripod over at my buddy's shop and I haven't been over there because we've all been kind of sick lately so we're not looking to spread whatever we may have around but that's basically what it is, the plug in it. It's got a little focus. It's got a little uh, o-ring on it and we're just going to change that out and uh, put a new o-ring on it. Alright, after getting bit up by ants, we're back. So I've got the o-ring kit, I've got an o-ring I believe is going to work. Looks to be about the same size as the one that was on there. So, but you can see how this one is all, if I get this thing, there we go. It's like all twisted around and focus basically the o-ring is twisted so <coughs> excuse me we're going to take this put this o-ring on here run her down all the way down and basically slap her back in so we just got that o-ring there i'm going to thread her back in tighten her up with a uh, 11 16 They don't need to be super, super duper tight. You're not trying to, you know, 
it is aluminum so you don't want to strip it out either but we're just going to snug it up it ain't going to go nowhere it ain't going to vibrate out nothing like that nothing crazy all right all sealed up on the plug the drain plug that's going to do it for the radiator now i will say the hyper radiators for how large they are i almost never use the fan the only time i really use the fan is we're on caution or we're pacing around screwing around trying to figure out what place we're in and shit like that but i when i'm racing i never really turn the fan on and like speed weeks when it was like 50 degrees outside forget it i had to add tape it would not build any engine heat but yeah they got a good setup with how large the radiator is the radiator is basically the size of the the width of the chassis in the car but uh yeah, everything else is good. All my lines are tied up, sealed up, I mean, all my AN lines and stuff like that. So I did flush the radiator already. I did flush it. I did clean it. I did go through and recheck all the bolts and stuff on the fan. I did check the radiator cap. The only thing I did do is I did tie an overflow hose over the front of the car towards the front. It's not that big of a deal. I never had it overheat on me, and if it did, I ain't going to risk it and just keep going. But... So radiator's done, now we're going to go ahead and start working on that tire over there. Alright, yeah, so pretty much all this hardware in here is all 7 16 hardware, so, sorry, quarter inch hardware, so we're just going to bolt it out, wrench, impact. You can run carbon, not carbon, I'm sorry, titanium. You really need it? No. I do on my big bolts, my big giant pickup points and stuff, that I will run titanium on. And my battery's down here. But, we're doing good. Come on, Milwaukee. You can do it. We die. One second. Swap out to a brand new battery here. That's my only complaint with Milwaukee. And I've had the big giant batteries and all that, and they just do not seem. They just don't seem to last. All right. So got all our nuts off there now. We're going to run them out of the top. It is a tight fit, so I'm just going to block them all out of there. Do the best we can to leave it all together in there so we don't lose the washer. There's a hard face wash in each of those. This is what we're after here. So we've got a rubber gasket. You see where it's all basically blown out and just, just junk. So off you go, we'll get some silicone on here and put her back together. Basically, we're gonna take this. Now, if you had silicone on here and you were redoing this wheel for some reason, you'd have to scrape, you'd have to scrape it all off. You want a basically clean surface, you know. So both sides of the wheel. Now I am going to leave a couple bolts in here so it'll line when I go to put the uh, silicone on there so I don't have a major issue getting that back together. And one of the other things too I'll note, you see how some holes are bigger than the others? The bigger holes are for your wheel studs when you put it on your hub. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to take our silicone and all we're using is 100% silicone. You can use whatever you want, it all does the same thing. We're just going to run it along the surface of the rim to seal it up. So you don't need a lot, you just need enough. And I'll show you what I do on the outside. So we don't need that much on the inner here just yet. And I'll show you what I do on the outside and that'll give us a good seal. All right, so that's our base. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finger 
and then I'm going to run it around. Just make sure I get a nice coating around it. You don't need to put it in the holes. You put it in the holes, then you're going to have your bolts all glued up with silicone, and then it's going to be a pain, it's going to be a mess, and you, know, you don't exactly want that. So just run it around. You don't have to stick it in the bolt holes, just to make sure there's a good amount around the center. Just run it around, get it everywhere. Get it around the bolt holes. Don't put it in the bolt holes, but... I like that Jaws movie. In the hole, around the hole, back through the hole again. And they're hunting for that shark. But under that though, yep, so there we go. All the way up, there's our outer layer of silicone. So now, wipe your finger off so you don't put silicone all over your nicely polished wheel. Now that, that silicone, we're gonna take our other half that we had from earlier, we're gonna place it on top. And make sure you don't put the holes for your bolts where you drilled for your, uh, your wheel studs. So just make sure your wheel stud holes line up with the big holes on your wheel. You're going to have to rotate it a couple times until you find them. Because the last thing you want to do is have to pull the wheel apart because of that. So there's a big hole, big hole, big hole, big hole. Alright, so we're good. Alright, so there we go. We're sat down. Now I'm going to go ahead and take all the rest of the bolts, run them through the top. all set up. And then we're going to tighten it down and once we tighten it down then I'm going to show you the other part of silicone on the outer so that we have a perfect seal. Get one more in here. Alright, so we're all ran down. Push all your bolts down flat against the wheel. Give your wheel a nice little push down on it. And make sure you have four of your big holes for your, uh, your uh, hub there. Now, we're going to take our nuts and we're going to run them on the back side. So just thread them up. This is what I was talking about. If you put, I don't have it. Maybe not except one or two, but if you put silicone in the bolt hole, then your nut's going to be covered in silicone and your threads and this and that, and it just makes a mess. But when you don't put it in the bolt hole, you won't have that issue. That and it makes your wheels look bad. You got a bunch of silicone hanging out and this and that. So if you do have that happen, though, you take a razor blade and you go on the inner of this wheel here to clean it out. Compared to like the rubber gasket, you can't do that because you'll have the chance of nicking the rubber gasket on it. And I'm not a professional as far as this goes at all. This is just what I do. This, these are just, this is just my method, how I do it. So I'm going to go on a cross pattern on this wheel, tighten it up. You can see as we tighten it up, you can see that silicone squish out a little bit. This is just the first tightening sequence. We're not going to go crazy. There is a torque, and I do torque them. All right, so those are all of our bolts and our nuts tightened up on the rim. So now we get to enjoy the full part. Now this is going to be a little tricky to show on camera, but I'll be able to show you. So now, we have the wheel basically all glued up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this wheel and we're going to run a bead of silicone on the outer end of this rim here. So, let me see if I can position you better so that you can see the whole thing. Alright. I think that'll do it. 
So I'm going to try to do it, start, and let it roll all the way out. So I'm just going to stick it in here like this. And we're going to proceed with gluing. Not gluing, but silicone. Kind of want an even amount all the way through. If you mess it up, don't worry. At the end, I'm going to show you how to make it look clean. This is all one trigger pull. All right, you set. And we're just wanting to run this in this crease down here. So we're almost there in about another three inches. All right. So, there we go. Now, what we're going to do is you see we've got the silicone laid in there. I'm going to take my finger in this rag. I'm going to smooth it out. I'm basically packing it in the hole as well as smoothing it out. So, get your rag, run it up. So, you see how now we have a nice bead of silicone and the wheel is sealed up both from the inside and the outside. So now basically we're going to let that dry and if you want you can wipe off the excess which I'm going to do. Just keep the wheel, we don't want the wheel too out of balance but I'm going to take the excess and wipe that off but you basically want a nice smooth inner and you can see where the silicone is packed into that corner seal of the rim there but that's pretty much it as far as the wheel goes assembly and gluing them and all that so you have the option when you buy them new you can buy the halves you can buy them brand new and you basically can either put the rubber gasket or you can put the silicone I don't recommend the rubber gasket because they're prone to failure slip There's the rear. You gotta do the top side. Hold one side, roll the other side. Kind of work your way around. You can use a tool, but it's not necessary completely, you know. Roll it around, roll it around. center and there you go now we just got to put a little bear in and we'll be good to go but we're gonna let that silicone dry so you'll set it up there give it about a day because we ain't gonna use it anytime soon obviously